every week for those who haven't seen this before uh baguette and switch for, or lip tops from baguette and switch does a breakdown on all the coat data from the event for the last week so we have realistically 270 players in the event we, okay we lost three and uh, which basically means we have 270 decks every week that could change week to week and we're seeing about 260 decks i think change week to week but uh i could be correct it's maybe 250 decks changing week to week so it's we, we're seeing it we're seeing a good overturn uh, overturn of decks so we've got a good sort of test pool for each of these sas metrics to see what the kind of the average is for these decks yeah so again unsurprisingly this week the sas has increased to 65.31 now given the sas max this week was 66 percent it's not too surprising to see it increase um, because that's what we would expect though it is closer to the limit than it has been in previous limbs but also there's now more amber control pips i mean 11.9 average is quite a jump from where we were before i'm just trying to see where it was for round three is that in the table am i being blind uh, uh it'd be right amber which isn't on there Okay, yeah, I am being blind, it's not there. Uh, so, and everything is increasing, which isn't really a surprising. But efficiency, and Brett keeps telling me this isn't a surprise, efficiency is growing every week. And it's showing how much of an important part efficiency is with any SAS rating and any deck. Because you're seeing that the speed you go through the deck, obviously, is, is the quicker you go through the deck, the more common combos that you can go back through and regenerate. But apart from that, it's pretty much what we're seeing. Yeah, and with the new efficiency bonus coming in from Dex of Keyforge, yeah, the way the the more the, the faster you can draw through your deck, the faster you can take advantage of the SAS rating, the the better it is, and that kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah. So let's move on to the next. So, moving on to the next slide, uh, Kota has increased in so. This round, this last week, we've seen Kota go up 14%. So we've got nearly 100 of the 270 decks are Kota. Uh, and I'm a little surprised to see it increase that much. I mean, Mass Mutation has also had a 30% increase up to, from sort of barely 60 odd to coming up to 80, 82%. AOA is still pretty stable there at 62%, but Worlds Collide dropped again to f down yeah. 43%. I mean, I, I wouldn't I'm surprised by that. I'm not as surprised. For me, World's Clyde has always been the has always been the the more uh, World's Clyde's a, a lot more of a balanced set. It was a lot of a, it feels like a more safe set after what the uh, the risk they took with Age of Ascension. So you either get a really good World's Clyde deck or a really swingy World's Clyde deck. Uh, it might also just be down to the the look of the draw in the games. Yep, uh, it could it could well be, but I mean, I think every week we're going to see a, a huge swing in the core of the outcome mass mutation numbers. But this massive drop in worlds collide, it'll be interesting to see how that changes with the decks that have been put forward this week. Definitely. So the house wise, realistically, logos has increased a bit, but I would say it, apart from that, everything's pretty much the same as it was before. Uh, I mean, there's a few things that have dropped, but on the whole, uh, it, it uh, it's near enough within the margin of error i'd say here apart from the logo growth to 24 percent it's interesting to see the mars drop we might see mars increase as when we get into like the, the low 70s but we've seen this we've seen the big three shadows logos and this all increasing as we get higher up in sas makes a lot more sense yeah <coughs> yeah and connie's saying all the world collide with brockner in has dropped off so yeah okay <laughs> yeah. yeah there's a slightly bigger drop for, for brockner there I, I, i'll be honest i didn't actually look at that one but the rest of them are near enough coming close so the most common uncommons here lights out is now the most common uncommon card which is a little surprising again it's a really good card but it's, it's it, you don't pick a deck because of it unless it's got three but it's so, yeah but it's also got i think lights out is also in three sets that is true and same with like cards like intentional graft and too much tech doing three sets so it's a lot easier to have multiples definitely <laughs> And as we see multiply going down, we'll see a lot of the cards that were that were printed in multiply but haven't been printed in anything else, dropping numbers. Uh, 
I mean, there's now only four ho houses in the top un ten uncommon cards. So we're talking. <coughs> this is such a big difference: Sanctum, Shadows, Logos, and Dis. But Dis so, and Sanctum have only got two in there, so that means eight of, of the top ten are Shadows and the ten are Shadows and Logos. And as we get higher, we're going to see a lot more of the bar control or scaling up control coming in. Definitely. Uh, and we're still seeing Plague Rats as number one for the uh, rares. Still up there, 33. I've stopped bringing Plague Rats. I don't know. It's, it... I'm surprised we're still seeing so many Plague Rats at this point. I don't know. Maybe are there are many high, high decks. But also, Nifflekong is still there. So remember, that's eight Nifflekong because of 16 card count. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and fa how, how does that work with Ultra Graviton? Does that mean there's five? Yeah. Okay. So there's five Ultra Gravitons. So it, it, it's interesting to see this because we're seeing the same sort of cards. I don't think it's changed that much, but just seeing so much shadows here between these commons and rares. Is that just saying that shadows is is very similar between all the decks? Would you say? I mean, it's still only 27, 27 decks of lights out means on average every deck has one lights out. I mean, I contribute. Sorry, one in ten. Sorry, one in ten decks have lights out. One in ten it has lights out. My, my deck has lights out, and you can't rule out the possibility of multiple lights out. Yeah. Well, no. The most lights out come in pairs. I discover when you play at any competitive level. <laughs> as much as we claim to be uh, most people bring casual. multiples of like card, of bounce cards and like nature's call hysteria. Yeah. Because it's a very, in Keyforge, with the amount of capture and the amount of effects that you want to be able to keep using, bounce cards are really strong. Definitely. So, Heart of the Forest has increased from 6 to 7. Uh, one Jankar has gone from 1 to 2. Briggs have gone from 8 to 4. Mm -hmm. And Ganyanauts have gone from 7 to 8. So I'm loving the amount of, I'm loving the increase in Ganyanauts. I'm, I'm loving the, de the halving the number of by of the Briggs. But I mean, Briggs are a lot more of an RNG based combo. Yeah. Ganganauts are, Ganganauts are powerful if you can uh, have control of the board. And Heart of the Forest and Jenko is just a great way to set up a win condition. Yep. Yeah. And then two decks with uh, tribute combats to the front down from four. Darker Amber Volts have gone from one to. Sorry, uh, one to four. But there's five volts between the four decks. Uh, the translation for spoiler one is if the tide is high. All of your creatures get plus one amber and plus one, uh, plus one armor and plus one power. If the tide is high for your opponents, all their creatures get plus one power and plus one armor. Uh, <clears throat> yep. So three decks with Bone Miffin and Snave House decreased by one, and the other two are not much much much. The win rates. Now, this is what I always find the most interesting here, and this is the biggest shift you've gone. Before, so Age of Ascension still has 50 50 chance. If you're running Age of Ascension, deck, half the Age of Ascension decks are winning. So that's great to see in many ways because we always look at this and say Age of Ascension always loses. No, they're losing, winning half of their games at this point. But Call of the Archons and Worlds Glide have crashed. I mean, Call of the Archons was 60% last week, crashing down to 45% here. I mean, this is a huge, huge shift. A mass mutation going from what I think was 46 last week up to 58. I mean, Again, the, it's, it's another shift between Call of the Archons and Mathematician, because Math, I think Mathematician dropped and Call of the Archons on the rise. rise. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's really interesting. Then the house-wise, yeah, if you have this, you're down a 44% win rate. Now, given how popular the this house always has been in every event we've run, that's such a shock for me to see it at such a low win rate, but the rest of it is kind of going as I would expect. But you can also that also explains why Worlds Clyde is being dropped up because you've got to think all this information is brought to the players every week as well. Yep. So if you're seeing Worlds Clyde losing you, each every single round and you're experiencing that your Worlds Clyde is losing each round, you're going to sort of shift out, especially seeing as we're now in over the 50% mark of the rounds. So this is where it matters. This is where the, the, fi the final few games will help you get into the first, second, third, and fourth places that might get you into the top 32. Yep, completely, completely. So, bye.